guys, it's Jenny here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, we'll be doing part three and hopefully I'm going to be trying my best to get it done as the last part, um, The Colour Along from Romantic Country, The Third Tale by Eerie. All right. And um, this is where we've reached so far. Um, this is where we left off. And yeah, I thought I'd start adding a little bit more colour now. So I'm going to start doing um, our little... A soldier here and starting to add some color to the baubles and things like that and then hopefully if I'm quick enough I'm going to try and aim to finish this off today um, or in this video <laughs> um, as you guys know my one part is usually over a few days but um, yeah so let's get started um, I'll zoom you guys in and um, let's start with adding a little bit of color to our soldier um, and then we'll see how things pan out. All right, so I'm zooming you in. All right, so keeping with the theme of my blues and cool tones, I've decided to do the soldier a very light blue and maybe bring in hints of purple. I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to distribute some more purple on the page as well. So hopefully um, what I have in mind is going to work. Um, so I'll start off with my blues. I'm starting off with light ultramarine. Now I want it to be, like I said, quite light. So that's why I'm starting with my lightest shades first. Um, and then I'll build up the color. I want it to be light because I need to differentiate it with this dark blue post box that we've used. Um, So I'm just laying down first my light ultramarine. I'm not sure if I'll be activating. Um, sorry, I didn't mention it, but um, again, I am still using my Faber-Castell Albrecht pencils. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'll be activating anything, but I have my water, my paintbrush, and my paper towel ready on the side in case. Um, I decide to do it. As always, I'm working from areas where I think would have the darker color or shadows and working in through to the middle. And then I'm going to use a sky blue. Just to go a little bit more into my highlight areas. And then my white. So as you guys can see, um, my color along video, the parts I'm doing are so far apart. I don't think I'm able to, definitely I'm not able to um, fit in the chatty color alongs at the moment in my um current lifestyle my current schedule it's very very hard and i'm finding that i'm doing so many a lot fewer obviously color alongs for you guys than i did previously so i think after this particular color along i might go back to my old style only because even though i enjoy doing the chatty ones and actually to be honest when it comes to editing it's so much quicker there's barely any editing to do um so the editing part of it is so much faster if i do a chatty color along however i think i'm finding i'm coloring i'm getting less time to do uh you know my own coloring so usually when i do color alongs like i say i put it to music and i'm able to just in the background listen to my own music just mute it and um do some relaxed coloring for my for me time um and also if if my family is around me and they're watching tv i'm still able to record my color alongs however when i do the chatty color along i'm not able to um record at any other time other than literally when i'm on my own um and so it's limiting how often i'm able to record for you guys so i think because of that because of the limited time then I get to record um it's just slowing down the color along it's making it so that I'm not able to record as many for you so and they're so far apart um so I have decided that yeah I think I might have to for now go back to 
my regular kind of color alongs just so that I can record it quicker for you guys. Um, and I have more flexibility with, you know, when I'm when I'm able to to record, I'm able to sit down and just um, record, even if it's really noisy in the house, even if my son is here watching cartoons, I'm still able to record, make sure I can mute it and still put it out there for you guys. Um, so yeah, I think for now, I may have to go back to that kind of style. Um, I've noticed that even though this is so much more enjoyable for me as well, it's so much easier for me to talk you through what I'm doing um, and also for the editing, like I said, it was unbelievable, so much quicker to edit, but, um, I feel like, yeah, I'm not able to get out the videos as quick for you guys. So for now, for now, um, I'll go back to what I used to do just so I can get more color alongs out there for you guys. Hope you guys don't mind. Um, I did want to try it. I did want it to work, but yeah currently with my current um <laughs> layout and schedule and you know uh lifestyle it's not possible unfortunately i think the area of white is too much so i'm just bringing in a bit more of the blues into my highlight areas okay I'm trying to keep it light but not so white so let's see if i can just bring in a bit of the color so yeah hopefully you guys don't mind um i know you guys enjoy it like this i enjoy it like this i enjoy color alongs where people are chatting as well to be honest while i color my own thing or follow along and i'm listening to them chat it's easier to do so um but yeah unfortunately it's just not working right now all right, so basically that's what I'm thinking of doing for my blues. So quite light, and I think it'll get broken up with a little bit of the purple. And I'm, I wanted to bring in silver. I thought that would look good, but I don't know if it's going to work with the post box because I've done used gold. So I may have to use gold, but a different gold for some of these accents or the buttons, things like that. Okay, so again... Going in with my light ultramarine. This time I'll try and bring it in a little bit more because I haven't planned this. I don't practice this before recording for you guys. I just go with, with the flow. Um, sometimes you'll see me try and correct things and alter things until I'm happy with it. But I'll try and bring in the color a bit more from the word go this time so I don't have to keep going back and forth between pencils. Not long to Christmas now. Hope you guys are all organized. Um, I know it's a very happy time of the year for some. For some, it's a difficult time, a challenging time. So I hope you're taking time out for yourselves um, just to sort of recharge yourself for the new year. Have a little bit of me time. Um, it can be quite a difficult period. Um, of the year but if it is a tough time I hope you get through it I hope you manage to just spend a little bit of time with your loved ones those near you don't don't get so stressed out about presents and you know making everyone happy with gifts and spending too much don't worry about any of that just enjoy the time off you know from having work and things like that um and if nothing else, just enjoy relaxing at home with no worries, no no work, no nothing. Just try and enjoy having some quiet, chill out time. I'll be working. I have taken one day off. <laughs> That's it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'll be working. All right, so this is exactly how I'm going to do my blues. And I, what I'll do, just like it with the post box, I will try and lay out where which areas I'm going to put the blue and I'll do it off camera so you guys don't have to watch me over and over again. I'm just coloring the same 
combination. So this is in down through in blue, just adding a little bit of depth, lightly, very light handed, just to the shadow areas, like under this top here, it would create a bit of a shadow. And maybe around this boot area. I'd put a shadow on this side to make it look like that leg. It's sort of in between, so a bit of a shadow from this leg to that leg. All right. Okay, so that's the plan with the blues. I'm going to try now and map out where the blues are going to be on my soldier. So I think I'm going to do black boots. Just make it look a bit different. That's going to be the, I don't think I'm going for silver. I want it to, but I don't think it's going to work. So that might end up being gold. And so will the side of the trousers. I think this is going to be blue. So I'm just going to put the first pencil, light ultramarine down to show which areas I'm going to color blue. Okay, that cro the cross is going to be gold. Um, I think, yeah, this is going to be blue, the sleeves. I don't know how purple will look, but I think if I'm adding other purple on other elements on the page, it should work. I'm not going to put too much purple, but I don't want it to be just a blue soldier, especially because we have practically an entirely blue post box other than the little gold accents so I do need to differentiate between the two I can't uh, two I can't just do blue and gold so that's why I thought okay I'll add a little bit of um, purple as well so this is sort of the arm isn't it I'm just gonna all right this part of the coat is going to be blue. These lines again, the little detailing on the coat will be called, I think, and the buttons. And then this part as well will be the blue. and this part as well like we said for this area so that's going to be blue all right I, I'm thinking hopefully it's going to work but I'm thinking this middle portion will be purple like light, light purple and maybe those shoulder pads right there that will be gold those will be gold maybe this part we can just do blue. Yeah. And for this hat, is it? These will be blue. Right, so those will be the blue, same color combination as we used earlier. Then I want to put in a little bit of accents of purple just to break up and to differentiate the two um, uh, uh, elements there. All right, so 
I'm going to go in with manganese violet. Where should I do it? I'll do this center part here so I can show you the color combination. So. This is my actually my shadow color for the purples, the, so the darker shade. Okay, then I'm going in with crimson. This is only my second Christmas page I'm I'm doing this year so far. I don't, yeah, I don't usually get that many done actually. Um, yeah, just because of timing, <laughs> you don't get that much time, do you, during the Christmas period to to um, color or to sit down doing nothing. Um, so. Yeah, and with work and all, yeah, I haven't had that much time. Um, so I've done, I've finished one Christmas coloring page um, in an uncolored book. And I started a couple of others. Um, so hopefully I can actually get it all done. I can get a few, sorry, done. Um, this one will definitely be done. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just going over with my, sorry, my manganese violet, just to add a bit more depth. Don't want to go too dark, so I'm not using any darker purples. I just want it to be, a, sort of break up the blues, but um, be quite subtle. So I think that works. What do you guys think? Hopefully you like the colors i've come up with um a bit different for me so i've started one page that i'm going to make quite conventional christmas colors but i've noticed that my other pages are going quite crazy coloring um crazy color palettes just putting a bit of shadowing around these buttons which will more than likely be gold i will see more than likely again that will be left uncolored till the end of the page. I might end up using gel pens, glitter gel pens or metallic to do the buttons. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think that will look nice once we obviously that's very light blue at the moment. But once we add more blue. So let me just mark out the other areas I'm going to do purple. So not too much purple. I just wanted to break it up the color a little bit. So let's do these shoulder pads here purple and this bit of the crown the other things i've left blank will more than likely be gold and black for the shoes possibly the strap will be black um sorry i'm just thinking um about my the stone here what should we do it should we do it purple okay i might i might leave that out because i might bring even a little bit of green in there because our green is just concentrated on the tree and the little leaves here so i'm going to leave that out for now and um yeah let us 
I think, okay, let me do the black and then, and then we'll go away and finish off um, wherever we've mapped out the color, okay? So I'm just going in with black for the shoes now. So what I'm going to do with the black is I'm going to lay down some black, not covering the whole shoe. And then I'm going to activate it with water to bring it sort of into the lighter areas to automatically give me some shading, some highlight and dark areas. And then I'll go over with the pencils dry. These dangly bits will more than likely be, again, gel pens when I come to doing embellishments at the end. So that will probably be uncolored till the end. As always, I'm going from my shadow areas to the highlight areas where I think will be the lightest. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take my water brush. Well, my water brush is empty. I'm just dipping it in um, water and I'm going to activate. So, sorry, I'm going to Go from the highlight areas i'm just bringing in a little bit of the black into the highlight area because i don't want it to be fully white i want there to be a little bit of grayness to it which is why i thought i would activate but very carefully i don't want to make it too dark although you can go over with the pencils and lighten it up um, with like the light grays which more than likely I will do, but sometimes when I'm doing a black element, I find, especially if it's just small elements like this, I, I find it easy just to use black first, activate it, bring in some of the color into the highlight areas or the lighter areas um, to make it look gray. And then I go over with the pencils again with the black. And usually I don't need that many more pencils to sort of help make it look black. All right. Okay, so how does that look so far? Yeah, I think that might work actually. I think I'm gonna just lighten up my purple areas, just uh, make sure my white pencil is clean. And I'm just going to go over these highlight areas with the white just to lighten it up and to smooth out the colours a bit. Then, is this dry enough? I'm going back in with my black. It's not completely dry, but depending on the kind of paper sometimes, and I would go quite light-handed, but depending on the kind of paper, sometimes if it's just slightly damp, a lot of the pencil pigment comes off and it makes it quite intense and quite dark, which for a black element, it usually works really well. Um, because you want that coverage, that dark, that intense coverage of black um, in the darkest areas. So sometimes when it's slightly damp, it's okay to go in, but you have to make sure the paper is going to take it. It won't just rip through and you'd be very light handed. Yeah. Okay, and then...
there. So it gives a little bit of a highlight, but just to help it out, look a bit smoother, we can go in with the grey. So I've got cold grey 3 here. And I'm just going to smooth out that transition from our black into that area where we had pulled the black colour when we activate it. So not covering the entire highlight area, just sort of smoothing out the border between the, that area and where you've laid down your black. So from he over here, I'd go on the black itself and just go into the highlight area a little bit, just smoothing out that transition. There we go. Yeah. So that is our boots. And then I'm going to be adding some gold. All right. And then similar way, I'm going to do this strap, I think, black, just to, yeah, just to um, link it up with the boots. So this strap here, same way, okay? So I'll do it off camera. I'm just showing you where I'm doing the blacks. This buckle part, I'll probably use gel pen, so I'm going to leave that uncolored right now. This part here will be part of the strap as well. All right. Um, I think that's it for now. I'm just thinking maybe the hair, I might end up doing the hair black, but the beard like looking a bit grayish. Um, I'm just thinking where else I might end up adding black. All right, we'll see when we come to it. So, all right, I think that's enough to maybe get a bit more color in and then I'll come back and do the skin, <laughs> the face. Um, and possibly by then I'll have decided about the hair. Um, I'm also thinking that this bow might end up being purple and some baubles as well. So maybe I can do a little bit of that actually as well, just so you have a few more things to color before we come back. Am I in view with the bow? No, I'm not. Just gonna, sorry guys, just bring that down. All right. So I thought that will look nice, just now starting to dot around a little bit of the purple. So I'll do half of the bow, maybe this half. Manganese violet. For this, I might add a little bit more shadow, I think. So we'll see what color will work. All right. Crimson. Light magenta. That's some white. Um. just to brighten up the highlight sort of areas. Okay, then I think I do need to add a bit of depth to the shadow areas. So I'm going to try, only because I don't have so many pencils out. So I've got Indanthra in blue here that we used on the soldier and I'm gonna try and see if this works as a shadow. Sort of, Indanthra in blue does have a little bit of a purple hint of purple in it so I thought it might work I don't think it's bad is it gives a bit of a depth there good and then I can just go over again just to tone down the blue 
darkness of the Endanthrin blue. Yeah, I think that works for the shadow. Just gives a bit more of a pur darker purple shadow. And I think some baubles. So, which baubles should we go for? Um, I might go for this one. I think, did we say the light? If I remember correctly, we said the light was coming from that angle. So, this area of the bauble will be in the darker area, curving away from the light. Yeah. And I think let's make, I'm just coloring over the patterns and then I'll see with uh, gel pens if I'm going to add any of those detailings back in or with uh, paint pens. Yeah, they're so tiny, the details to color. I, I don't usually enjoy coloring patterns, so I'm, I like to do it this way. I just color over those little, little shapes that are on the baubles. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with my crimson. And my light magenta. And with the light magenta, I'm going to bring a little bit of color here just to help sort of create that little bit of a roundness to make it look round and make the highlight or the white reflective spot sort of right there in the middle, not in the middle, closer to this side because that's where the light is going to be hitting, but um, not directly on that border of the ball. Yeah. And then I'm going to use a white just to emphasize our highlight and we can always come in with a paint pen later but then i think with the baubles we need a little bit of depth again to the shadow areas so i'm just going to deepen up my shadows on this side of the bauble the one further away from the where the light would hit yeah There'd be a shadow under this part which is attached to the little chain or string that you hang it onto the tree with all right just go over that again just to smooth it out a bit and to reduce the blueness of our endanthrin blue. I think that's nice. Okay, good. And then obviously we'll emphasize that shine on the bauble with um, with a paint pen at the end when we do the embellishments, which will help um, make it look like a shiny bauble. All right, good. So we've added a little bit of the purple scattered around. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to finish off our bow here and our the blues and purples and the little black that I've added to the soldier and I'll be right back with you guys all right don't go anywhere okay guys so I filled in some color on the soldier um to me it looks still a little bit uh too light maybe but I'm going to start add, filling in the rest of the color on the soldier and see whether we're going to need to darken up at least the blues so maybe use like a dark indigo or something just to darken it up but um, I have to be careful that he doesn't just blend in with the post box so I'm actually finding this quite challenging this color pa the colors I'm trying to use it would have been so easy just to go for the reds and greens and then done the soldier in like what blue and red and gold that would be quite um, easy just to go for but 
I'm going to go with it and we'll see. Well, I don't have a choice now, do I? But we'll see how it goes. Um, I've tried to figure out a gold for some baubles there. Um, slightly different to the gold we've used on the post box. So I might try and use that same gold on the soldier as well to bring it onto this side. So uh, before I show it to you on the baubles, I'll try and use it here, especially for this little, is it horn, trumpet, horn? Um, and then I'll see how obvious it is and decide whether the rest of the elements we've left to be gold, whether it's going to work for that and if I have to darken up my blues. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's carry on with the soldier. I'll just zoom it in and we'll get started again. All right. So I thought I'd start with um, doing the skin color. Um, first, so I'm using a light flesh. Not making this too complicated, it's just a toy soldier, isn't it? So not trying to make it realistic or anything like that. It would be probably wooden. Um, but let's just lay down a bit of light flesh. And I think this as well, I'm just going to do it. Or should I have done that black? Um, okay, I'm going to leave that for a second, actually. No, I'm just going to do it, the skin colour, that's fine. You guys can see how indecisive I am when I'm colouring. I just go with the flow and I just try and figure things out as I'm going along, which is why... Um, it's probably better to plan out a page, especially if we're doing colour alongs, but um, I can't usually see a full page, you know, in fully in colour to know exactly where every colour is going to go before I actually colour it. All right, so this is cinnamon. Going from the areas that would be in shadow, so underneath the little hat we have there under the moustache the face is rounded so around the sides of the face same with this side Under the eyebrow just to make the eyebrows look a little bit 3d under the glasses here all right um i'm just trying to think whether i need to add more color to that i think i'm happy with just keeping it as simple as that um so i'm just going back in with my light flesh blending it out a bit Smoothing it out a bit. All right, and then I'm going to go in with ivory. Make sure your ivory is clean. Then what I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll do the hair after because I'm going to use, actually, yeah, we can do the hair. So let us do the hair. I thought I would do black, sort of black gray. So I'll do this side and I'm going to do the same for the mustache and the beard. I'm just going to put in a little bit of black and then I'm going to try and make it look more gray than black like the boots.
So I'm leaving quite a bit of white because we don't want it to look fully black, you know? Laying it down quite as fast as I can. Faster than how I usually color, but there we go. All right, and then I'm going to, yeah, use my water to activate it. And then I'll go over with the pencils once it's dry, you know? So just pull it out a little bit, but we're gonna use more grays, so we don't need to pull it out completely and just activate it. Okay, good. Um, while that dries, let's try and put in some of the gold. All right, so what colors am I using? I'm going to use, and what part should I do? I'll tr start with the little hat here. Um, so it's going to be a slightly different gold to that. I don't know if it's going to make it too dark, but we can't keep him completely light because then it just doesn't work it's not for right now the way it looks i don't think he's working for me yet so um this is terracotta i could have used antique gold but then i don't want to that won't be nice and bright for our baubles so i don't want to use too many different goals um so we're going to try this one so we can use it for the baubles as well so let's see how it works um so that was terracotta then we have brown ochre going over where the sh darker areas or the shadow areas would be. There we go. And then my light yellow ochre. I have quite a few small pencils here. I should probably get more extenders that work with the apertures. Okay, that was light yellow ochre. And then I'm going in with cream in the highlight areas. Brightening it up a bit. Then I didn't want it to be too orange, so I'm going in with my teeny tiny Kaboot Morton Violet. For the shadow areas, tone down the orange and give it a different effect to the gold we've used there. Yeah, and then again for the shadow areas, burnt umber. dark sepia there we go it's a nice gold actually but does it work feel like we're going to have to darken up our colors. I'm just going in with the brown ochre just to reduce a little bit of that orange effect of the terracotta. All right. I like that gold combination, but we'll have to see. I think I might need to darken up our blues. So if I was to darken up the blues, let's just do it on the hat. This is my thinking process, guys. This is what you would normally see on my videos when I put them to music, but you wouldn't hear me like, you wouldn't hear the clogs ticking. <laughs> so I've, oh, sorry. I've gone in with my 
dark sepia. Do I have it here? Not dark sepia, dark indigo. Yeah, good. I have it here. Try and see if this helps. It might actually help. Sometimes you just have to go with the flow. And if something doesn't look right, you can just correct it. And I think maybe darkening up the blue is going to help with that. It's still slightly different blue to that, isn't it? Because we don't, did we use like bluish turquoise or something for the post box? We don't have the hints of the turquoises in the blues on the soldier. So I think what we're going to end up doing is going in with this dark indigo and just darkening up our shadow areas in our blues and i think then that sort of works with our um gold and i think he was just too light i wanted him to be light but i don't think it was working with how vibrant and bold the post box was so what I had in mind for my soldier is just not working for this page, which is absolutely fine. So we're just changing him up a little bit. Like I always say, I'm not an artist. I cannot picture <laughs> what it's going to look like until I start playing. And I think once we darken that up, then the gold and all sort of works better, doesn't it? So then you can also go back in with your blues just to smooth out that transition. So what am I going in with? I think the light ultramarine. Just to smooth out that transition into the highlight areas from the dark, from the area we've made very dark now into our highlight, but not covering completely the highlight area, yeah? Maintain that area of highlight as much as we can. Good. Yeah, I think that's going to look better, isn't it? So we'll go ahead um, in any areas of blue, just add some of the dark indigo into your shadow area. So for example, if I show you on like the sleeves here this is the shadow area yeah so we're just going to go in and add some of that you don't have to add too much it's just to give a little bit of depth to our blue because it's so light compared to what the rest of our page is looking like yeah all right um so what i'm going to do now is i'll show you i'm going to do some of these elements with the gold so let's go in with our terracotta this part of our shoulder pads are going to be gold i'm going to do one side of the uh, soldier and then the other side of it we can just finish off off camera so it doesn't take me too long here yeah? all right and also some of these elements are so small it's quite hard to pull them in with pencil but there we go so we're doing this oh yes forgot about this part that's going to be gold too and these bits here okay and then also our trumpet is going to be gold 
we're just going to use the same fold. Then we go in with our brown ochre. Sorry, I'm just getting my pencil extender. I think you get the gist of how I'm going to do the gold. So basically, as always, I'm working from the area of shadow into the area of um, highlight. So what I'll do is I'll do this little bit, finish off these um, gold elements to music on this side of the soldier. And then the rest we can do off camera. All right. So let me put this part to music while I just finish off those so you can see how it's going to look.
So that's how we're doing the gold elements on the soldier's clothing. So we'll do that for the rest of it. Okay, um, I'll do it off camera so it doesn't take too long. And um, and also remember the dark indigo to darken up the blue. So you can go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to show you what I'm hopefully trying to do with my the hair. So I'm going in with my black. We'd activated it with water. I'm just going in, darkening up the shadow areas with black, and then I'll work with my um, grays. All right. I'd forgotten to do the eyebrows, that they will also be blackish grey. The eyes can be made darker. There we go. All right, then which greys am I going to use? I'm going to use just the cold grey three like we've done earlier. Just going from like overlapping a little bit, um, layering over the black a little bit, and then just going into the highlight area. Then you can go in with cold gray two. Again, overlapping a little bit of the cold gray three that we'd have put down. And then cool grey one. All right. And if you want, you can darken up the black a little bit if you want in the shadow areas just go over lightly not too hard because then you'll have to blend everything up again all the other greys or at least the cold grey three so just try and make it light so you don't create a harsh line mainly doing it in just the shadow areas so that Darkens it up a little bit. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. And the other areas, like the buttons, I might actually end up doing um, black. I'm just trying to think if I'm going to make it gel pen or should I just fill it in? I think let's just fill it in. Yeah, I think I'll do the buttons, these buttons, black, but the ones going down the front, we might use gel pen. So I'll leave that out for now, okay? So I'll do the same thing on that side. So that's then pretty much the toy soldier done, other than we don't know what colored stone or gemstone I'm gonna use. And um, the other areas that I've left out will be going in with metallic. Uh, or glitter gel pens so like these little dangly bits off the shoulder pads and the ones here and then these buttons down the bottom so I leave those till the end and then once I know what gel pens once I come to do the embellish embellishments that's when I'll fill those in all right um, so what I was going to do next is we're going to finish that off off camera so that's basically just finishing off the gold elements and darkening up our blues with our dark indigo and the other thing I can show you is some of the same golds I've used on the toy soldier. I'm going to show it on the bobo so that um, you can also fill out the bobos. Now the ones, I'm just checking I'm in view. 
Okay, the ones I'm going to do gold are not the round ones, these uh, oval shaped ones, okay? So let's do this one and then I'll do the rest off camera. The light is coming from this side, like Rich said, so this area will be lighter than this side, all right? So terracotta, um, brown ochre, Light yellow ochre. Cream. Yeah. And then Caput Morton Violet. Shadow areas, darkest, darkest areas. Okay, uh, burnt umber, and just a bit of dark sepia. All right, so that is what my gold ball balls are going to look like. So all of these oval shaped ones, all right? Okay, so shall we go ahead and do that off camera and I will then put a screenshot to show you exactly where we are at and then we can carry on. All right, be right back. Okay guys, so um, you would have seen a screenshot of where we are at now. Um, so you can always pause and just catch up if you needed to, okay? Um, now what I've done is I'm starting to work on this little um, bucket <laughs> uh, holding the Christmas tree and then the little bars at the back on the wall. So I've just based a couple of them with um, Nougat 178 and I, I just wanted it to dry so we didn't have to wait for it to dry as, um, yeah, because I activated it with water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I'll just base the other elements, activate it with water, and then that's basically what I've done for the little bits I have filled in. And then I'm going to start working on the pencils uh, with the pencils dry in the areas that are already dried up. All right, so let me zoom in and I'll show you how I did that. So literally all I did was put down a layer of nougat. Didn't fill up the whole element, I just... Went from the shadow into the highlight, left a little bit of the whites of the paper. I only based with nougat on its own, no other colours. All right. And then also these little sort of wood panels at the back. I've decided to make them wood. At first, I thought maybe there would be gold or something, but I think we do have quite a bit of gold already in the foreground. So I decided to keep it similar color to the bucket. Just to sort of tie everything in so that we have some of the colors we're using distributed basically over the whole page, not just in one area. Yeah. So literally, I'm just laying down the nougat. And then I'm going to come in and activate it with some water. And I'm bringing in some of the nougat into the areas that we've not, that we left the whites of the paper. Because I don't want them to be white. I don't want them to be the color of the paper. I do want the nougat to be there, but I want it to be very light. Like it's going to be the highlight area. 
so I don't want to um, have it as dark as where the shadows are going to be. I'm still going to probably bring in another color or two for like the coats, um, which is okay if that's the only color. For example, these two girls can be a different color to the rest of the page. So I'm still thinking about it. I'm thinking like turquoises, maybe, um, maybe like cinnamon light flesh sort of colors. We'll see. Um, but okay, so basically I laid down the new girl. And I let it uh, dry up. So we're going to start working. I'm um, just going to push this up there. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so let's work on this basket, uh, bucket here. And I'm going in with my this area. These three panels on this side of the bucket are dry. So I'm going in with my warm grey 5. Then I'm going in with dark sepia. Darkest areas. Okay, and then I want to bring in some walnut brown, so a bit more of the browns. in with the nougat just to very lightly just to fill up a little bit of that highlight area with some brown because it's too light okay and if you need to you can add a little bit of black just to darken up your shadows so like under the tree at the joins of the panels I don't know if it's called panels, but you know what I mean. The little planks of wood that make up the bucket. All right. So that's my brown. And I think that should work with the top, the, the little bars on the top. So that's how I'm going to do all my, um, all the bucket. I'm just thinking what I'm going to do with this bit. I'll see, I might add a bit of colour, I'll see. So we're going to leave that for now. And I'm going to zoom you in on the top to show you the panels. Okay, so first going in again with my warm grey 5.
All right. Then what did we use? That was warm grey five. So then we go in with our dark sepia. to the areas that would be darkest. I'm going to darken this line to just differentiate the two panels. It's always hard colouring on the edge of the paper. Um, it's easy to like catch the ed right the the complete edge of the paper and bend it when you're colouring in the in that part. Um, it's like you go off the page, isn't it? All right, and then this one. All right, then we go in with our wal walnut brown. So let's start here. Don't go over the entire dark sepia. Um, just sort of slightly over it at the border of the two areas or the yeah the border of the two areas and then sort of bring the color into the highlight area the walnut brown you don't want to go over the whole dark sepia because in the shadow areas you want it to stay quite dark which is why i went over with black um as well earlier So yeah, if you go over it and you lose a little bit of that depth or darkness in the shadow areas or the darkest areas, you can always go in with, again, the dark sepia or like a black or something just to darken up the shadow right at the end. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to go in with my nougat again. And then I'm going to go in a little bit with the black, just to intensify, deepen up my dark areas. Especially like here behind the tree, you want to just make sure that it looks like it's behind. Yeah. Be a bit careful on the top. Sorry, I'm just going to readjust the paper in case it helps. The paper I have under 
I always have paper under my pages. Um, not in this book because the the line art, the, the ink is very light, but in some books where the ink is like really black, you can sometimes get transfer from the one illustration, one page to the other if you press quite hard or yeah mainly if you press hard but sometimes it does transfer and I, you can erase it very easily if that transfer does happen I like to avoid it okay I think that sort of works doesn't it I'm just going to add a little bit of the nougat again in the highlight areas but I might have to bring out my ivory I don't think I have my little swatch um, swatch card for it, but this is Ivory 103, and I just want to use it to blend out those highlight areas. So Ivory 103. Right, so what does that look like? Hopefully hopefully that looks okay and doesn't look boring. Um, but that's basically what I'm going to do for the ones at the back and the rest of that bucket on the bottom, okay, um, over here. So that's the colour I've chosen for that. I'm just trying to think, shall we go away and do that? So we fill it up with a bit more of those colours, then I can, again, see where we stand. I might start adding colour to the baubles or the coats and then I know what colours to bring in for the other baubles um, and yeah we can take it from there so I'll be right back after just filling up those little areas all right all right so we're slowly filling in the bits um, and now I think I'm just going to fill in those signs at the top there and then start colouring the the girls here all right so let's first do the signs I'll zoom in again. Okay, so I'll show you this one here and we'll do exactly the same for the other one, all right? Um, so I'm going in with Cold Grey 3. I decided to keep it quite light on the back again. Um, just fill in this space and I'm going to... I'm not going to colour over these little detailings there. I might use gel pen, metallic gel pen, to come in and just fill up those areas. So I'm literally just going in at the edges and coming in slightly. Um, so I'm starting off with just greys, just to give it a little bit of a shadow, but leave the sign pretty much white. But I'll see if I want to add in a bit of hints of blue or yellow. I don't know yet. I don't know what to do with those the windows yet, uh, whether I want to dark, make it dark so it's like if it's a building, the, the you know, the the lights are off. Um, I don't know. Although at Christmas time, all the display lights are usually, display windows are all very well lit up, isn't it? And very well decorated. So I don't know if that's going to work. I did want to at first add some something in the windows. It's such a large area. So like maybe... I don't know, some, not a wreath, it's, that's too hard for me to draw, but I, I just can't think of what to, what to add, um, to just fill up that space, that's a problem, that's easy enough for me to draw, to fill up the space, um, which is what the problem is, I just can't think of what I should, if anything, draw in there. All right, then I'm going in with cold grey 2. I'm just um, 
thinking whether I need to create a shadow of the tree because it's pretty much up against the wall here so what I might do is just go in a, again with my cold grey 3 and just add a little bit of a shadow on this side of the tree only okay it's very subtle you can go over it and darken up certain areas like right next to the tree if you need or use a darker gray all right and then just a cool gray one to sort of smooth it all out Quite simple. Um, just trying to think. Maybe if I bring in, um, I'm trying to see what I can get with yellow work. Um, I'm thinking what, whether I should bring in a little bit of hints of blue in the sign or turquoise blue, just like a glazing of it. Um, I'm going to be adding some turquoises to the coat, one of the coats. So maybe I can bring in, this is light cobalt turquoise. Hopefully this sort of makes sense. I don't want it to be too bright. So I'm literally doing like a little, a very, very light glaze over the grays. The grays will make sure it's a bit muted. So it's not a very bright turquoise it's just sort of toned down and just sort of glaze over it all just to I don't know if it shows up on camera but it does make it look less flat I'm not very good with using just grays I feel like using literally no other color as a base or over the top with grays makes it look really really flat um so I find it really hard to just leave it at that when I'm using only greys for an element. You can go over a little bit into the highlight where there's no grey, very lightly still. Um, just to give that hint of a blue, yeah? And then, don't think I have it pulled out, but I'm bringing out a cold gray five, literally just to darken up the edges a little bit and behind the tree a little bit. Again, I'm quite light-handed. I'm not pressing too hard. The cold grey uh, five would be quite dark if I did press very hard. So this is cold grey five, two, three, four, uh, 234. Just, it was an afterthought. That's why I don't have the little swatch card in front of me. Okay, that darkens it up a little bit, doesn't it? Um, so hopefully that's okay. Just a little bit of hint of colour to those signs, but it, it pretty much stays um, quite quite light. And then 
later when I come to do the embellishments, I might go over the writing in like a black or something like that and then pop in some colour into those um, little details there. All right, so that's how I'm going to do the signs, I think. Um, keep it quite simple. And now I want to start working on the girls and bring in some colour, some other colour. So as I was saying, I was going to bring in a little bit of turquoise into um, one of the coats and I think it's going to be this one here. So I'm going in with my light cobalt turquoise first. And just laying down a base. I find it very hard to stay with the limited palette, which is why I felt like I needed to add more colour. Um, what colour are the boots going to be? Maybe a, just a simple brown or even black, but this is going to be sort of the socks. So I'll bring in a bit of the turquoise down here. And I think I'm going to make that white. I'm going to put a little bit of turquoise on in her hair tie. Okay, then I'm going in with um, Helio Turquoise. So it's okay that the coats of the girls are a totally different colour and you don't have so much of this colour on other parts of the page because you don't want them to completely blend in or be lost in all the other colour. And so it's actually quite a good idea, I think, hopefully it works, to make them a slightly different colour. And then we can add little dots of this colour. So for example, on the couple of bow balls that we've sort of uh, left out, uh, maybe the hat up here, so we can see how we're going to distribute a little bit more colour but we don't need to add too much of this the colours we use for their coats anywhere else because um, yeah we want them to stand out a bit Because of blending it all, I may actually end up activating it with water. What do we think? Let me just see how it goes if I add otherwise we spend a lot of time trying to blend everything together so if you have the option of activating it's sometimes nice to activate it um i think i'll leave it let's see how it goes so sorry go back with the helio turquoise and in, in the hair ties here the little bow all right, and then I'm going in with deep cobalt green. Just sharpen up my pencil a little bit. It 
helps with the blending process, getting into the tooths of the paper much easier without having to press too hard. All right, that was deep cobalt cream. And then I'm gonna go back in, because I haven't blended it with water, sorry, deep cobalt cream and also for these areas. Okay, because I haven't activated it with water, we need to do a bit more blending. So that's where Sometimes it does help put down a base. And I think I might add for a shadow area, dark indigo. Just to reduce the greenness of the deep cobalt green. can tell my blending is not that great um, because I'm trying to do it so fast for the camera with this kind of a colour along. Um, usually I just take my sweet time. I don't worry that I'm taking so long. I don't worry that it takes me so long to do a single page and I won't get too many pages done. I just enjoy the process. Um, but here we go. All right, then I'm going to, I think, go in with a dark indigo, which I think I was expecting because I have it ready here. I think that looks good. It stands out a bit right now, um, but I think it works. Just having a different colour for the coat. <laughs> you guys can tell me what you think. You can, of course, if you don't activate with water, use something else like a blender pen or a blender pencil to help blend everything together rather than spend too much time 
having to work with layers and layers of color. All right, I think I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of my light cobalt turquoise. I keep forgetting the bow up there. Just to smooth out this transition into the highlight area because it didn't look very well blended or smoothed out. And it is clothing, so I don't want it to, I want it to look like a nice, smooth fabric all right just to sort out this brown this is my dark indigo then my light cobalt turquoise okay so that does stand out a little bit but i wanted to okay um and I'm going to do the same thing with, I'm just having a look, I'm in short. I think I'm going to do the same thing with a bauble. I'm trying to think which one. Because of the colour I'm coming in here. And also I think I'm going to do his hat that colour too. So let's do the hat, going in with my light cobalt turquoise. Actually, yeah, okay. Maybe a turquoise. I didn't think this colour along would take that long actually to be honest I it looked like there was such simple elements but it's still taken me a decent amount of time um, to colour it and to get it out to you guys um, but I do tend to like to make sure I do all the little details and things like that so maybe that's why all right we need to do one of these ball balls here how about we do this one okay I'm gonna I'm just gonna color over the the detailing like the previous ones now you like we said the light hits here however it's behind the post box so i'm going to just put in a dark area on this side so it it sort of helps with the 3d effect sorry that was light cobalt turquoise now i'm going in with my helio turquoise because i want it to look like it's sitting behind that post box deep cobalt turquoise just lightly because we have a green tree we don't want it to blend in make it look more turquoise for the bauble than maybe the coat yeah now dark indigo Light cobalt turquoise again. All right. And white. Is the white clean? All right. Okay. I think that's okay. Um, let's do this coat. I think I have sort of an idea for it. I hope it works. Um, again, it's a totally different color. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going in with Venetian red. Um, 
where should I put the I think same same sort of layout so let's say it's going to go in quite light I think it's a nice color next to the blue so we'll see if it works Okay, we have some trousers there. Um, didn't think about the trousers. <laughs> oh, I might bring in green or black and then brown boots or something like that. Or brown trousers and black boots. Hmm. I just thought about what colour coat I wanted. I didn't think about the whole outfit. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do the hat the same colour as the coat. Alright, so that was Venetian red. I'm going to go in with um, cinnamon. Let me just do half of the coat because I think this is going to be, this is taking a while um, to do all the blending. So let's do half and then you, it's pretty much the same for the um, coat and the hat, yeah? So now I'm going in with the light flesh. Going over the cinnamon a little bit and then into the highlight area. Indian red. Lightly.
in as always going from the dark area into the light area i keep forgetting i'm recording so i go all quiet when i'm coloring <laughs> there we go okay so just little hints of the uh indian red i can always go back in um but now i want to just brighten it up a little bit so i'm going to put it salmon and i'm going to sort of blend it out into the highlight so go over the shadow areas so the indian red the venetian red all the colors we've put down and just sort of go into the highlight not fully into the highlight so you're not covering up everything but you're blending out those slightly darker shades into our light flesh yeah I think this is a nice colour that just breaks things up a little bit, I think. Um, so I'm just trying to see where else I'm going to bring it in. I'll definitely bring it in to the ball balls, at least one, um, if not both. I'm going to have to see where else I can bring in. <laughs> I'm running out of things to colour on the page. It's almost done say it's almost done it'll still take me a while all right and then i'm just going to go back in with my light flesh just to smooth out the transition into our highlight area from the salmon that we just put down you know go over the salmon if you need to smooth things out a bit and into the highlight area go over smooth things out Cover up the whites of the paper because we haven't activated, so we haven't put down a base that would have covered up the whites of the paper. So you can see how it does help putting down a base, whether it's with markers or watercolor paints or watercolor pencils. You know, um, it just covers up the whites of the paper from the word go, and then it just makes it easier. I would still layer, but it just makes it easier at this end point where we keep having to go over the dark areas just to make sure there's no whites of the paper showing through yeah all right i think i'm happy with that you can always darken up the um shadows if necessary so for example here with the in indian red you can just go in a little bit we know that area needs to be darker you can sort of go in this part and maybe under this collar which I'm going to make it white and, white and fluffy which I have, that's why I haven't yet put color there yeah so you can just darken up certain areas again if you need to all right so that's what the hat and the rest of the coat is going to look like and then here with the, with the sort of lines the horizontal lines that have been put there we're going to, I'm going to be using white paint pen to just cover it up, but um, to make it look, I mean, I have to put in a little bit of shadow, even though I want to make it look white. So with the fluffy bits, I'm just going to add in a bit of cold gray three. Just add hints of it so that gives it a bit of a lift, gives it a bit of a shadow. So it wouldn't be fully white, would it? So here as well. And then I'll use a white pen and paint pen, especially on this one, to cover up all those lines. Because I want it to be white, I think. Yeah. And we can then go in, I think I'm just going to go in with the cold grey one now. All right. 
right. Brilliant. Just going to do the skin. Just simple again, such small areas. So you don't want to make it too complicated. So light flesh, just a base. I'm going to have to add a bit of blue there. All right. And this hand here. That's it. And a little bit of a neck here. Okay. And then cinnamon. not doing any anything crazy with the skin just literally putting down some color i think i'm getting to that stage where now i just want this page to be done <laughs> all right a bit of cinnamon there and then go back in with our light flesh and then i'll use the ivory like we did for the soldier And then the ivory. Um, I don't think I have my swatch card here, but it's ivory 103 and it's a little bit dirty. Make sure it's clean. You don't bring any other colors you've been using it on. What did I use it on? The browns at the back on the wall. All right. And we're just going to blend that all together. I've left out the little buckles on the coats um because i'll probably just use some glitter gel pen or metallic gel pen or, or paint pen to fill up those spaces and just give a little bit of shine to the page at the end yeah all right um these baubles are going to be the same as the coat color so i'll do one of them venetian i'm going to go in with the venetian red Covering up the, the detailing. I'll see if I go in again with the glitter gel pens. I'm going to come in a little bit on that side like we did with the purple baubles. All right, Venetian red. Then I went in with cinnamon, didn't I? cinnamon then light flesh and then I think it was Indian red if I remember co correctly This you can darken up a bit more because we want it to look shiny. So you can press a little bit harder. It's a bauble. We want it to look shiny. So the way to make something look shiny or metallic would be to make sure there's a high contrast between your dark shadows and your highlight areas. So you do need to darken up the shadow areas. And then I'm just thinking... I'm not going to go over the whole thing in salmon. I'm just going to add a bit of pinkness, sort of at the border between the Indian red and over the Venetian red. So there we go. And then just add a bit more light flesh here because I've got two large A white highlight area. Yeah. And then if the white is clean, which it's not, it's got some blue. Go in and brighten up your highlight spot. I'm just going in <clears throat> with my Indian red. Just to darken up this side of the ball ball again a bit more. Alright, and I think we'll do the same for this one, I think. 
could have distributed it a little bit better but that's fine at least we bring in a bit of that color there all right so we're going to do that bobo we're going to finish off the coat and i'm just thinking about the trousers um we might go in with brown trousers but i think it might be worth just finishing off that um i think what i'm going to do is the boots for this little girl will be the same as we did the boots here so you can go ahead and do that and i think the boots i might end up doing the same here but we can see how that goes um, maybe before i go off i can do the hair i'm going to do brown hair um quite simple so let me do that as well um actually no let me go off and do this because i don't have my swatch cards out to sh to put out here so even though i sort of have an idea of what colors i'm going to do i don't have the swatch cards to show you so let me go finish that off i'll pull out the swatch cards and then come back and show you the hair all right be right back okay so i'm going to go ahead and finish these little girls here and then um we'll see what to do next i'm going in and doing their hair i think i'm just going to do their hair the same color um, I'm going in, I'm going to make them have dark brown hair. Um, so I'm going in with burnt ochre as my lightest colour. And because they're so, such small areas and I don't think this pay, this book necessarily goes for realism so i don't really need to spend too much time trying to make the hair perfectly realistic um so yeah i'm gonna do yeah i think i'll just give them the same hair so there we go just put in a little bit there then i'm going in with burnt sienna And even though I'm not going for realism, I'm still trying to do some strokes at least um, where I can just to, yeah, get that texture of hair. Then walnut brown. Not going right into the highlight areas now. Very little hair here. <laughs> and then finally, I'm going to use a little bit of black. Just with a few strokes, it just emphasizes that because it's so dark obviously it emphasizes that uh, texture of the strands of the hair so don't do too many but it just sort of yeah gives us that texture 
the flicking motion that we're doing and use it mainly in the darkest areas like behind that bow so it looks 3d sort of stands out behind the ponytail here so that the ponytail looks like it's not just blending into the head the back of the head all right and then oh sorry this one as well so mainly just under the hat to create that 3d effect the shadow from the hat All right, and because the highlight areas are very faint, they look pretty much white now that we've put down the darker shades. I'm just going back in with my light tone, which was the burnt ochre, just very lightly to fill up those areas, still with with flicking motion rather than, or yeah, up and down sort of motion rather than um, circular motions. Yeah, just to so we don't lose that texture of the hair. Same here. There we go. All right. Just adding a little bit of burnt sienna here. Just to give more of a brown, reddish brown tint to the hair. There we go. All right. Good. So that's the hair done. And we need to do the trousers. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to go for like Caput Mortem. So not at first I was going to go for brown. Um, blue is not going to work. Blue would have looked really nice with this coat, but we have so much blue in the background. So I'm going to sort of stick with the browns, but I'm going to go for like the Caput Mortems. Yeah. So I'm just basing with light flesh. Yeah, and then I'm going to go in with my tiny little Caput Mortem Violet. These little lines that Eerie has put in, I'm just trying to use that to sort of create slight creases in, in the trousers. All right, and then I'm going in with my dark sepia. Hopefully this looks good together. I haven't actually tested it, so we don't know, but let's see. Trying to emphasize those creases so we can get that nice effect. And we would have a shadow underneath the coat. I think that looks nice together, doesn't it? I wouldn't wear an outfit like that, but it looks cute. <laughs> the coat is nice. I don't think I'd wear this color trousers, but I think it works for the page. I think the color combination works.
And usually I'd go in with cinnamon now just to fill up those, um, slightly reduce the whites of the paper, but we don't want to lose the creases or the highlights completely. We want to keep that crease sort of effect to the clothing. There we go. Okay, good. I think that looks okay. Um, and as you saw, that I've done the black um, boots, like I sort of mentioned, I was definitely going to do it there. I did the same there. So exactly how we did the boots there, you could, if you want to, you could do it the same. All right, then what am I thinking? I'm thinking I want these little papers to stand out. However, I've sort of thought about my background you know the windows i was thinking okay, am i in view for that let me just zoom out a bit okay so i was actually thinking that for the windows um i might actually bring in a warm color now that i see so many cool uh colors here i thought that if i bring in a bit of yellow orange it might help and maybe it'll differentiate between that background sort of window so maybe it's the, the inside of a shop or something and the lights are on and it's warm inside, whereas this is outside and it's cold. So I don't know if that will is going to work, but I couldn't think of what other color to use. Um, and I don't think I'm going to do the drawing. I don't think I can. So I'm just going to try. Yeah, I think I'm going to try yellows. I think, see if I bring in, I think it should work. A little bit of warm colour with all this cool colour should work. So let's do that. I'm going to do that. If you guys don't like it, obviously, you can always, you know, bring in your own colours wherever you don't like the colours. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot and we're going to see if it if it works. If it doesn't, oh, well. <laughs> all right. So I'm going in with dark chrome yellow. I more than likely might end up um, activating but because it's such a large area. But let me see how it goes first. I really hope this works. In my mind, I feel like a warm colour will just bring things to life a little bit. Even though I wanted it to be quite a wintry, cold sort of look to the illustration. Maybe the fact that this is the warm colours I'm using. So the yellows I'm going to use is mainly just for the windows. Maybe it'll just... Yeah, in my mind, I feel like, okay, we're inside. It's That's inside the building. It's warm in there. The heating is on. The lights are on. So <laughs> let's see. But even from a coloring, you know, coloring perspective, like having a little bit of warm color in contrast to all the cool tones we've used might make it look good. That contrast will be nice. So I'm just literally going around the sort of edges of the windows. Coming in a bit. I'm not being very neat because, as I said, since it's a large area, more than likely I might end up activating. Um, I'll see how it's going. Sorry, I'm just readjusting that. I'm just going to do some linear diagonals like Erie has drawn here. I think I'm just going to bring in some of that color like that to help with, sort of help with the glass effect. And then I'm going in with Naples yellow.
here and then do we need to i was going to do a little bit of cream um yeah we can put in a little bit of cream i'm trying to keep the middle of the window quite um white so not bringing the yellows all the way into the center of the window yeah just a little bit of the cream sort of blending it into the whites use it to actually blend out the other colors if we don't want to activate it I think that looks nice actually yeah I like that um, and I'm just going to ever so slightly darken up the edges or just add a bit of orange to the edges with orange glaze I think that works nicely, doesn't it? Just gives a little bit of brightness to the page. going in a little bit again with the dark chrome just to make sure it's smoothed out and then later when we do the embellishments again um, I will come in with paint pens to cover up those lines And that's exactly how I'll do the other window as well, which I can do off camera. Okay, good. I think I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Now, obviously, if I had decided I knew what color the back wall is going to be or the windows are going to be, so now I've used the yellow. If I had done that at the beginning, you could always do the re light reflections if you wanted to play around with light effects. So you could obviously do reflections and stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to do that um, on this particular page. But yeah, I like I like how the orange yellow is looking there. And I'm just thinking whether I need to bring it anywhere else. Um, I think possibly... We could do this little guy's hat in yellow, or I might bring in that. No, I think we might tie in a little bit of yellow. So let me, um, are we in view? Yeah. Let me use a little bit of this dark chrome yellow. I know it's a, it's a Christmas hat. Usually they're red, but I've not done any red on this page. So I don't think I want to start bringing it in now. So it's okay if we use these other colors that we've used on the page and just sort of distribute them a little bit. That's good, okay. And 
I'm going to do his little nose over here. Can make this guy's nose a little orange glaze. I'm probably going to keep the guy white. So I'll just, just like I did the, the collars on the girls' coats um, with the cool grays. I will, I think it was three, two, and one, or three and one. Um, we can make that little guy the same color because if it's going to be orange on the back and I'm going to be filling up those little berries um, later on when I come to do embellishments, it'll look nice if it's white. It won't, it won't look a bit strange like it is right now. Um, let's put a bit of yellow on this hat here too, I think. And this is just to distribute a little bit of the yellow. All right, so that looks good. What do you guys think? Hopefully you like it. Um, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill up these the whites of the envelopes. Um, so I'm going to use light cobalt turquoise ever so slightly we want it to be a I want it to be a white paper but so just ever so slightly sort of in the corners sort of at the edges of the paper here because it's an envelope creating the shadow just under that uh, flap and then a little bit of the color there and I'll do this sign as well Mm, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll use do the sign. White as well. All right, and then I have light red violet, um, which I'm sort of going to use as a shadow. So just go over a little bit of that uh, turquoise, light cobalt turquoise. And I might actually, yeah, I think that's okay. All right. Um, let us do that little bit of, um, I'm just trying to think. We'll do the little teddy. I'm going to do him a very light brown, I think. So burnt ochre. Sienna. I'm going with a little bit of cream. I 
and ivory. Going in with cold grey tree, just to add a little bit of shading. Like I said, this little guy is going to be white, but we need to add a little bit of shadow. So if we just create a little bit of um, shadow, for example, under this strap, under that hat, under the nose to make the nose look like it's 3D. I think that's actually enough. I was... I'm going to put cold grey 2, but now I'm just putting cold grey 1 to blend it in. We have dark sepia here. I'm going to leave the strap because again, I might end up using gel pen to do that. And black just to I am increasing the size of the eyes a little bit okay oh and let's darken his eyes up okay all right and then just to give a little bit of more color to that um, card there I'm just going to use a bit of um, cinnamon for this guy's face. Don't need to do too much shading here. And then I haven't pulled out the colors, but um, let's do the present, the gift green. Just because we don't have any green down here. So I'm going in with my tiny earth green. And I'll, again, use some gel pens at the end. So that's earth green. Um, sort of trying to remember the colours I used for the tree and the leaves, but I don't know if I've got the right colours. Did I use deep cobalt green? Pine green, I think. And that should be enough for a little tiny card like this. I'm going to go in with my earth green a little bit here. There we go. I think that's fine. There's such small details. People wouldn't even really notice it when you're colouring it. But I find it so hard to ignore them. <laughs> All right. Now, what I've decided as I've been colouring is, I think this bow, I'm going to bring in the purple from the top, which we had done together. So I'm going to do the same there off camera. I'm going to fill up that window there. I'm going to leave these baubles because I think I might end up using glitter gel pen or metallic gel pen or paint pen. I'm going to do this trumpet the same. So I think I'm going to make these gold. So I might end up using gold glitter gel pen there, but I'll put, make the bow purple. All right. So this little horn will be the gold we used here. And I'm going to leave those leaves out. We'll see. I might end up using glitter gel pen. Whether it's in gold or green, I'll decide at the end. And the little crown, I'm going to do um, gold. No, sorry. Yeah, I think gold. Yeah. So I'll fill up those little little bits now, okay? So I'm going to go off camera, make that gold, make the crown gold, leave out those leaves there. I'm going to do the bow the same as that. I'm going to leave out the baubles for now. I'm not colouring in the, the, the berries yet till the end. I'm going to do the this window here exactly the same as that one. And that star, I'm going to use the same gold as we used for like the baubles and the gold here. So I'm just going to fill in that star as well. I'm leaving out all of those little bits and pieces there which I'll more than likely use gel pen for. And I'm just thinking about this little gemstone here. I think I am just going to bring in, you know, the turquoises we've used for her. So like cobalt turquoise, we'll, I'll probably just fill in that, but I can come back and do that on camera. 
um, so I'll leave that out for now. But yeah, so I'm going to go off to do the window, fill out these little bits here and the star there, and I'll be right back with you. And hopefully then we can just finish off the little gemstones there. And I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with that bit. I have a feeling I'm just going to fill it up with the dark paneling we use there as the borders. And then um, maybe gold. I'll see. So I think I'm not yet decided. That's why I've left that out still. Um, so we will, I will come back and decide that on camera. So let me go off and finish those little bits and I'll be right back with you in just a second. Okay, so what I've decided about this bit on the top is, like I said, I think just keep, I'm just going to keep it similar to what else we have on the wall. Um, so I'm just going to remind you, um, we're going in with the nougat first. So I'm doing the dark panelling sort of colour for the framework. And then I'll probably come in with gel pens for the, or even paint pens, we'll see, for the flower in the middle. But the background, I will leave the same as the signs that we've done on the side, okay? Thought rather than make it stand out too much, it'll look better if I just make it all the same on the back there. I like how the windows have turned out actually. Um, I think it gives a, a good contrast between all the cool colours we've been using and it just makes things stand out a little bit, I feel. And then, uh, what was it? Walnut brown. I think these are the last little bits now with pencil work and then I'll be ready for embellishments, finally. <laughs> it's taken me a while to colour this page. I think more than anything, it's just, yeah, the way... Um, We've done the, the colour along layer with the chat. So it just takes longer than if I had a chance to record at other moments during the day. So <laughs> there we go. All right. And then what did we use for the inside? I think was it... I'm just going to go in... What, what, what pencils do I have here? I have my cold grey too. So I'm just going to... Did I use cold grey? Did I use warm? I think I used the cold greys. So I'm just going in with the cold grey three, sorry, not two. Going in with my light cobalt turquoise. The problem with allowing a page to sort of drag for too long is that you sort of forget certain colors that you use unless you've written them down you forget what color combinations you've used and then um yeah it's hard to just sort of quickly pick up those colors again or figure them out again um like i'm lucky i'd written the color combination for the back wall there i just realized i'd forgotten to use a bit of ivory um for the the dark panelling, otherwise I wouldn't have remembered for this little bit here. Okay, all right, good. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Now, just these gemstones, I decided that instead of bringing in the green or the turquoise, it's not going to stand out much. Um, 
over here such small elements i don't want it to stand out as such but i don't want it to just completely disappear so i've decided to just bring in a little bit of the yellows we've used for the windows because it's a nice bright color um so i just thought that that's what i'll use and i'm not going to put too much effort into making it look like a crystal or a gemstone yeah they're too too small for me to spend the time to do that so that was dark chrome yellow going in with my naples yellow um cream and the orange glaze good all right i think we can leave it at that and now pull out all our um paint pens and glitter gel pens i think i'm going to start with a little bit of paint pen work with the white paint pens and then um yeah it, it's it's quite hard when i usually record i will you know work through it i'll pull out some colors and then it's easier but when i'm chatting to you guys it will be a little bit of um back and forth between my glitter gel pens and my paint pens but that's fine i'll start off with some white paint pen first and then uh, work with a little bit of glitter gel pen and then i'm going to finish off with some white paint pen because i want to create the effects of snow settled down on the post box and a little bit of dusting of snow sort of from the soldier and the trees and things like that and then right at the end i'm going to use my winsor and newton white ink to do the sprinkling of um the ink to create falling snow all right um so let me get try and get some of those things together some of the embellishment um mediums together and i'll be right back with you okay guys so i have a few things here all right so i have a posca white pen which i'll be using quite a lot of and I've tried to limit how many things I pull out in case not everyone has everything. Um, so I've got a few, um, I've got a couple of glitter gel pens. So I'm just going to use the Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallics in silver and gold. Hopefully they work well. I hope they've not run out too much. And then I have um, some of my Thule Art paint pens. I've tried to pick them out just from two sets i i have quite a few sets now but i've tried to limit it to um oh actually i've pulled them all out from the pastel set so i'm sure most people will have the pastel set and the um earth and skin tone set um and not necessarily have all the other sets so i've picked out a few of the ones from the pastel set um hopefully i'll remember and i'll put it in the description box below but we have number 19 number 4 number 23 number 13 number 12 and number 15 all right and then um i've also got some glitter uh, not glitter some metallic pens this is the um guangna um Lightwish Guangna Super Golden Markers, which I had done a review of on the channel. I quite like, like these metallic paint pens. And so I've picked out, I think it's the purple red color. Maybe the cyan blue, I think it is. Or cyan gold, sorry. Cyan gold. So purple, purple red gold, cyan gold, um, yellow gold. And that was the copper color. And I'm just thinking, uh, do I have a green out? I may have to pull out uh, a green. Um, so I'll be right back, but I'll also go and get maybe, is it the green gold? Green gold? Yeah, we'll get the green gold because I'll do some of the detailing possibly with that as well. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, and I have the green gold. All right, so I have a few colors here. I'm not necessarily going to use them all. I just thought I'd bring them all out um, so that if we do need to use them, I have them here on the side rather than trying to dig into pencil cases and 
things like that. Sorry for the noise. And I've got a little bit of a piece of paper that I'm just going to use to um, obviously activate the paint pens and to test them out and to clean them out because obviously I'm going to be doing... Um, I'm working over the Albrecht Dura pencils, which are watercolor pencils, so it can pick up the color, all right? So the first thing I think I wanted to do, what was I gonna do? I wanted to do a little bit of paint pen work, didn't I? Um, so let's go in, I'm just gonna sit down and we'll try and work through this. Um, so I'm just gonna cover up the lines where I have white objects or objects that I want to look white. So I'm going to start with the top here. I'm not going to zoom in too much because I'm going to be working around the page, okay? But you'll get it just. So I'm first going to work on the windows and I'm just going over the lines, even though they're very light, they're not very dark line art. Um, I still like for certain elements to cover up the, the line art. He has very faint lines, so if you colour over them in certain areas, you don't actually need to use paint pens to cover up the lines. But because this is a window, and we want to emphasise the window effect, we don't want any lines in there. Or if we have lines, we want it to be um, white, yeah? such as reflections, yeah? So this is just the Posca white I'm using, and the size, by the way, is 1M. I like that size the best. And then um, if you need to, just to emphasize some areas of whiteness, you can just sort of do a few random lines, okay? But the main thing is to cover up. And if you're like activating or pressing down to get more paint down to the nib, always do it on the side. Definitely don't do it on your page because you're going to end up with a little puddle of paint. Um, so yeah, always keep that in mind. I like to work with my paint pens before my glitter gel pens, usually if I can, because um, glitter gel pens take longer to dry whereas paint pens dry up faster. So at least I can continue working on the page. With glitter gel pens, you'll end up putting your hand on something and just spreading that glitter gel pen everywhere, yeah? So the other thing I want is this little guy here to be white. So we're just gonna cover up his lines, yeah? You can just add a few here and there over the grey that we had laid down um, to make it look a bit brighter, a bit fluffier. If you're able to get a small little dot in the eye, because the eye is so small it's a bit hard, but if you can, get a little dot in the eyes, yeah. And then this little bit is going to be... white and this rather than just drawing a line I'm actually doing strokes because I want it to look like a fur effect so it's very subtle but it doesn't look like a perfect straight line hopefully that shows up on camera and I'm covering up any other lines that are there again you can just add a little bit to increase the fur effect I'm cleaning off my paint pen to the side because it's a white one. It's going to pick up colors if I go over onto like the hair, for example. Now here, what I was saying earlier when I was coloring this particular coat was these lines that are there. I was going to just, I colored over them, but I was going to cover them up with the paint pen because I wanted this color to be fur as well. And again, you can just make it look a bit more fluffy
usually in my normal color along layouts I speed up my embellishment process so even though you can see I share everything I'm doing I speed it up because it actually takes a while to lay down all the paint pen carefully and not be too messy with it um, you can always color over paint pen so if it does get a bit messy you can but obviously after you've colored a whole page and then if you start getting messy and then have to use go back in with pencils it's a bit frustrating so I like to try and be careful and so usually I just yeah speed up this process because it does take a little while all right so the envelopes they will be white And this little fluff here so I'm just basically working my way around whatever I think should be white I cover up the line art we've already done the snow so usually I would have left that see I put my hand into that paint pen um, I left the I usually leave the snow paint pen work till the end as well but on this in this case I wanted you guys to see what it looks like before the end that's why I'd done it. Um, oh, I guess his little glasses. We haven't put any colour in it, actually. You can always go in with a bit of light cobalt turquoise to give a little effect on those glasses. Um, okay, I'm just having a look. I think that's fine for now. I think that's fine for now. I think we can work with some other paint pens and then if I need to add in a bit more of white, we can. I'm just thinking I should have brought a black fine liner as well, which I can always get later, but some of the writing I wanna go over and make it look darker. So I will go and get a, a fine liner pen later. All right, now to work with a few of these other elements, let's go in with the pastel. Uh, Thule art from the pastel set number four. I always clean my nibs at the end of use usually unless I've just used it recently then it will not have been done but this one is working perfectly fine but I do that so that they don't dry the nib the paint in the nib itself doesn't dry up um, and then cause blockages so yeah I'm just going to in the areas where we've kept the green on the tree the lightest i'm just going to cover up some lines okay just to give a bit of highlight i feel some it does help doing this um i like doing it um sometimes it is <laughs> quite a task after you've done so much pencil work to then still go in with paint pens but yeah, I think it, it uh, gives a little extra to the pages. You don't have to do it all over. Sometimes even just a few areas is fine. And if you think you've covered up an area which should sort of stay a bit darker or it looks too highlighted now, you can then, of course, always go back in with a pencil over the top. When you're doing realistic colouring, it really helps using paint pens because it just, yeah, makes it more like a painting, gets rid of those, you know, those dark black lines, especially in books where the line art is very dark. Um, but here it just gives a little bit of a highlight. All right. And I feel like I'm also going to do a little bit on these leaves. I know it's extra work, but I think the leaves might look a bit nicer. I 
again, it's just giving a bit of a highlight, I think. So I'm just doing it sort of, yeah, in the areas that we have the lightest shades. Definitely in the top, that's where the light would hit. Not so much on the, the bottom of the leaf, Not it's not necessary. But on the top, it'll give a nice effect. Just makes the leaves stand out a little bit more to me. Um, usually I would wait for things to dry and, you know, not just keep working. But because this video has gone on long enough, I want to get it done for you guys. And um, yeah, I don't want to waste too much more time now on the last run. All right, any more green? I don't think it necessarily needs it there. That's sort of a drawing, so you can leave it like that. Um, yeah, I think that's fine with the green for now. Then what other colors do I have here? I have blue for the post box and for the clothing. Shall we work with that? I have two, I have 12 and 13. 13 is really, really pale. Let me test out 12 first, see what it looks like. If it's too bright, then maybe it's not going to work. Maybe, so I'm going to go in with the 12 and I'm going to try and use it for certain areas on the soldier. Again, it's literally just to give a bit of highlight. Not necessary. If you don't like doing this, um, you need to. It is just an extra step that gets in the way of finishing a page. But I like to do it. I enjoy it. Um, hopefully this is dry. That's behind there, um, I think. That's it. I think I could add maybe a little bit here. All right. Um, I'm just trying to think whether this same blue is going to work or if it's going to be too light. I mean, darker than the other one. No, I think that will work. So just certain areas which are in highlight i'm just going to cover up the lines a little bit more i know they're not very dark lines but it just gives a bit of a highlight in certain areas so for example here i just yeah i don't know i feel like it gives a bit of a highlight hopefully it actually comes across otherwise i'm clearly wasting time on my all my pages Just needed more paint so I just act I just sort of pressed it down on the side if I used the number 13 that would have been a bit lighter so it might have given more of a highlight but that's okay I think this is 
working well enough. So usually areas, like I said, of highlight, areas that are further forward to something that like, so for example, we've created a shadow here. If you added a line there, it just sort of um, brightens up that area, makes it look forward, like just emphasizes the fact that it's further forward. I find it sometimes really hard to do a straight line. All right. Just down here. I think that's okay. I think that's enough for the blue areas. There's not much. Um, oh, let me just add. Hopefully I don't smudge anything but just add a little bit here okay um i think that's the blue all right and then what do i have here i have number 15 again from the pastel set if i'm not mistaken it was for this sort of color, is it? Or is this the lavender? Oh no, this is the lavender one. So it's gonna be for the bowl. Let me check it. Yeah, okay. So just to cover up and to give the highlights on the elements we've done, this sort of purplish pink color. See, that gives a nice highlight, doesn't it? And then around here we can, because the light hits there, but I don't want it to be white because I want to put a spot in the middle for the white. Yeah, and that I'll do after the glitter gel pen work because I want it to still shine after that. All right, and then here. Okay, a little bit here. And then these little shoulder pads, the tops off and the crown here. Mm, I think that's it, isn't it? We don't have any more of this color at the moment. All right, and then what else? We have this color. So this was number 19 which is for this sort of um, peachish sort of color. So I haven't used this one recently, so it was lying flat for a while. So you need to make sure you mix it up um, so that you get the right color coming out. Again, doing exactly the same thing. I don't think I have the patience to like cover up every black line or every line art, like the the line art, because uh, yeah, it would take absolutely ages. I know some uh, colorists do beautiful work and they actually use uh, white ink or, you know, they lay down a coat of white ink or gesso, white gesso or something like that to cover up the black line so to reduce the intensity of the black line art and then they color over it again it gives a beautiful finishing but um i don't think i have that um patience to do that so 
I only do it like this with my paint pens just at the end of a page. All right, I think that's it for that one. And then I've got a yellow here, which is the pastel set again, 23. It's a very pale yellow, just to give a bit of a highlight on the yellow elements, the tiny little yellow elements we have. I think that's it, isn't it? Um, we could use it, no, I was going to say we could try and use it on the gold. Yeah, actually it should work. There we go. On the highlight areas. All right, um, and of course on these ones. Sorry, I got really quiet because I'm trying to concentrate and see where else the um, paint pens are needed. And um, <laughs> it's really hard to talk and do this at the same time. Harder when I'm than when I'm working with pencils. This just gives the metal more of a shine, doesn't it? Um, here, it's going to be harder. I'm just going to do a little bit here. Not too much. Right, and okay. Um, here it's harder because the element is so thin. And it has to be straight. I find it really hard to do that. Can always go over in pencil if you mess up like me. I don't think that was very neat, but anyways, that's fine. I'm just gonna see if it's gonna work for this part. I think so. So I'm gonna use it a little bit on the uh, the gold elements of the post box as well. All right, I think, shall we stop playing around? <laughs> All right, um, what else can we do before I start doing the snow, settled snow? I also need to do the glitter gel pens and the other paint pens. Okay, so let's go in with things that we know for sure are going to be green. All right, so I'll use the paint pens first. I'm going to use the green gold from the super gold markers the guang na again you need to mix it really well i don't know if it's going to make it too colorful if i use it on the background but 
let's give it a try they're such small elements it can't be that problematic can it so i'm just going to go in with the green in these areas the metallic green and because they're paint pens it's going to cover up it's opaque so it's going to cover up the line art which is fine here as well I just realized I'm also going to use paint pen to cover up the I mean to yeah to cover up the lines on the soldiers uh, hair and beard um, I think let's do definitely do green here okay where else can we do green should we do green there or should we keep that gold I think I'm gonna keep that one gold um, I'm just thinking about that one. Yeah, we can do it green. Even though it's such a small element, I find these little tiny details the hardest um, to decide what color to put in. Because there's so many tiny, tiny elements then to fill in and it just makes it a little bit challenging to decide what goes where. All right, I think that's fine with the green. Let's go in with the, this I'm gonna do gold glitter gel pen. So I'm gonna wait because it dries slower. I think I'm gonna do gold glitter gel pens or silver on these, the dangling bits. I think, let's go in with the purple red, purple red gold. Um, Guangna pen for <laughs> I think these ones let's just do it Okay, and this one here. Hopefully you guys can see all this properly. I know it's not zoomed in, but it would be really hard on a page like this to just keep zooming in and out every time I change um, the element I'm filling in. Um, so hopefully you'll just get what um, I'm doing. Now, what I was thinking was what I was going to do with these balls. And at first I was going to do a gold glitter gel pen. However, when I look at it now, I am thinking that it'll disappear around the window area. So maybe it's worth doing it. Oh, we can bring in the cyan gold as well. So maybe I'll do some of them, the purple red and some this cyan. Um, we'll use a uh, cyan gold for it. So let's alternate them and we can put a white dot just to give a bit of a highlight if we feel like it's disappearing yeah with a paint pen white paint pen all right oops i made a mistake there that's fine <laughs> confused myself now that's fine okay let's do that Okay, then I'm going in with the cyan gold. To fill in these other, these are meant to be quick drying, so they should dry fast. When I did the review, they did dry very fast, so. Oh, 
when you don't go for conventional colors, sometimes it is hard to think of how you're going to distribute colors. So here it would have been so easy if I went for conventional colors to make the leaves green and the, the, the baubles, all the berries, um, red. Um, but yeah, it does make it a little bit harder, doesn't it? All right, so next. That's looking okay. So let's do, because we've got his hat as a sort of the turquoise, I'm just going to do fill in that, okay, with the cyan gold. Um, all right, then let us go in. We I have a copper here and a yellow gold. Let's go in with yellow gold. This is just to fill in certain bits, for example, here. The little buckles here. I think I'll make the buttons um, glitter. So we get some sparkle on the page because, yeah, metallic is nice. It'll give a bit of a shine, but it doesn't shine as much as um, a glitter gel pen would, right? Um, so even here, I'm just going to fill that up and, um, yeah, shall we just fill these circles in? How does that look with gold or should we do it a different color? I think maybe I'll do a different color there. I don't think the gold looks good there, so that's fine. Let us... Going to fill in these leaves instead of bringing in green here with the yellow gold. I think that will look better. All right. Put a bit of gold here and on these buckles. I'll put glitter on that one. Um, all right, let me just come back in. I think with the purple red. Because I don't think that yellow gold worked well with this color. But yeah, I definitely find all these tiny elements the most challenging part of a page just to fill it up with colour. Um, I'm just putting, filling in that area with purple red and then going back in with yellow gold. Don't want to add any new colours there because I just want to keep it consistent. So now I'm just going to go in with the yellow gold the remaining elements. All right. Um, what else? I think. I think that's it. What I want to do is go and get. I'm going to go and get some fine liners. Um, I'm not so sure I'm going to fill in the, 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 one, the signs at the back, the writing, because that will take ages and I don't mind. It's in the background. It doesn't have to be very bright. But for the foreground, I do want to go over the lettering with fine liners. So I'm just going to go get um, a fine liner now. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got two sizes. I'll see which one works. I have a 0.5 and a 0.8. Uh, sorry. No, 
Note 5 and Note 6 Ohuhu Liquid Fine Liner Pen, the Kohala um, series. Um, so I'm going to try first, maybe the 6, the bigger one. Um, so these ones are not supposed to smudge with water. They're waterproof. Hopefully this is working out okay. I think I think it's necessary to write over go over the letters. Um so yeah, definitely not on those signs at the back because it makes it very obvious. We don't need to bring the background too much attention. I think I'll just I could have gone in with gold, but I think it'll disappear with the gold plank that it's on. So I'll just write it in like that. Not very neat, is it? Do you see why I speed this sort of part of my videos up? <laughs> it takes absolutely ages. Um, and there's not much to say. Uh, when I'm, There's not much to explain, really, is there? Hopefully, once this page is done, I'll be able to get to doing some more pages, winter and Christmas haven't managed to do much but yeah I've been short on time as well but then obviously this color along has taken up the free time that I've had so that I could get it done as a chatty one all right I think that works doesn't it okay and then I just want to speed up now and let's go in with a little bit of glitter gel pens and I think I'm going to do a little And then we'll let them dry so that I don't smudge them and we can come back in with, so I'm just going to go over these dangly bits here as well. So I'm using the silver. Oh no, I thought it would dry fast guys. I've messed up a little bit here. It's okay, I'll be able to go over with a bit of pencil. Oh, that's a nuisance. See what happens when I try to speed up. Oh well. Don't do that, guys. Um, <laughs> that's really frustrating, actually. I didn't think that it would take that long to... Well, actually, I didn't really give it any time, did I? It's my fault. All right. It's okay. figure out if I can cover it up um, later but yeah you guys don't do that all right <laughs> um, so I'm just doing those dangly bits and then I think these dangly bits shall we do it in silver let's try it's not going to show up much but when you flip your pages and when you look at your pages you'll get that or when you turn your pages you'll get that little sparkle and that will be nice so let's do the little chains in silver and um yeah and the little accents like i said earlier you can always go in with some glitter gel pen i'm so annoyed guys that i did that So yeah, this is literally just for, it doesn't show up in a photo, it probably doesn't show up to you guys right now, but um, 
gives a little sparkle for you when you're turning your pages. So it's nice. It's coming to time to pick my son up as well. I didn't realise what time it was. So that's why I'm also rushing. So I can just finish this bit so that I can let it dry while I go and get my... <laughs> um, I should have let that dry too. But let it dry while I go get my son. And I'll have to finish the rest of the page later. Well, it'll be the same video for you guys. But all right. Then I want to do... I'm so annoyed about that when I'm looking at it. It's okay, it's okay. The buttons in gold. Yep. And I think... I'm going to do these ball balls in the glitter just because I want to see it sparkle a bit. I don't know if this is. Alright, um, just put in silver glitter drop in here for the buckle. Alright, anything else? Have I missed anything? I don't think so. I think I'm going to be patient now and let it dry before I go in with some white paint pen to create the settled snow effect. And then the final bit will be the Windsor & Newton white ink. Um, so I'll be right back with you guys um in just a second okay guys so i managed to just tidy up the little smudging that i did there with a bit of paint pen and i'm ready to go in with uh, my white posca again and now i'm going to be trying to create um the snow settled snow okay um so what i would look at is certain areas just like i i did the snow on the bottom just snow that settled down on certain surfaces so for example um i could do it on these flat surfaces here so i could do a little bit of and i'm just going to use paint pen for this you can always go in with a little bit of um pencil if you want to just add the bluish cut tint to the snow but all i'm going to do is just roughly Add a little bit of snow and you can have the snow sort of dripping down to give that effect that it's weighed down a little bit. And this is like a little, I'm trying to figure out where we've got our, so we can do a bit of snow here as well, similar sort of area. This is why it's always best to first do um, all your pencil work, all the rest of your paint pen work, your glitter gel pen work um, before you go in and do this because you're covering up some of that work you've done now. Um, so it would be hard to go in if you do all this, the effect we're about, we're doing now, working on now. If you did all the snow effect and then try to go in and fill in color behind it, it would be really hard. So it would just make your life a lot harder. So yeah, you can do a little bit of snow here. This is going to take a while, so I might just show you a little bit of uh, some examples and then the rest we can I can finish it off maybe off, um, off camera. Um, you can exaggerate it as much as you want. You can make it as subtle as you want. Um, so this is a toy soldier, so he wouldn't have moved. So they can be snow that would have settled on him as well. On things that maybe have been moving so like the girls maybe on their shoes or something you not on the backs of their shoes but usually on the fronts of the shoes you'd have a bit of dusting you can have a bit of dusting 
on their coats, but the coats are so light, so it'll be hard to show up. But we'll we'll get there. Let's see. Let me work on this first. So we're just adding a little bit of snow here. I hope I'm not running out. I really need this to just last the rest of this video now. Um, should have a backup, I hope. Yeah. Doesn't show up as much, obviously, on a white background. You can do a bit of dusting of snow like that, you know, just settled snow on the shoulders for example on here on the shoes there can be a bit of dusting of snow can actually have some snow gathered here properly Yeah. A bit here on the corner of the post box, just dripping down. And remember to keep cleaning to keep your this the Posca white looking white. If you're using our brick drawers, just make sure you keep white uh, just squiggling off the paint pen on a plain paper because it is going to pick up all this dark blue, for example, of the um, Albert Jurors. I think my Posca is running out. Just so I don't waste too much time, I may have to just pick up and look for another one if I have one in stock. Yeah, I think I'll have to. these videos you just get the the raw raw recordings basically because there's no editing now um when I put it to music if I had run out of my paint pen I would have like you wouldn't have even realized on the camera um but this is real isn't it all right so basically that's what I'm trying to do let me let me get another Posca I think this one is running out it's going to take me a while playing around with this I'm so lucky I had one. I'm going to have to make sure I write it down to get another one in stock because this was my last one. I've activated it. I'm going to go back in and brighten up these. Yeah, it's better. I'd have been there forever trying to um, make the other one work. Okay, now... A little bit here, collected on the corner. Um, so you can add as much as you want, and I don't want to take too much of your time trying to do that because, um, yeah, I mess around at the end, I think more than necessary um usually so i won't do too much but i'll give you an idea i can have a little bit scattered on these as well but we don't want to cover up the letter the <laughs> letters the words as much but that one's okay oh we could these would be slightly protruding so you can do little dustings of snow and here that one I think has a little bit of the covering from me from this part of the post box so I'm not going to
Okay, you can do this. The way I've done the clothing, it's so light, it's hard to actually do much dusting on these. Maybe a little bit on the hair. Okay, so um, also I would do it. Um, I'm just trying to see how much I want to do. You can do a little bit of dusting maybe on some of the leaves. Yeah. Don't want to cover them too much, but a little, of, little bit of dusting of some snow. So here we can have some snow collected on the hard surface. Anything that is horizontal um, would maybe, and still, you know, you would think that, like, for example, the kids will not be covered in it because they've been walking. They might have a little bit of dusting of it, but I'm not going to be able to show it that well on their clothing. But the other elements that are just there, not moving, um, that are horizontal, would collect some snow if it's been snowing, especially if it's freshly snow, fresh snow. Like it's just snowed, it might melt otherwise, but yeah, for fresh snow, it may have collected. So I like doing this effect. And if it's something that is sloped, maybe the snow is falling off it like this and dripping off because it's heavy. can have some collected in like this little corner. It's just a small, it might be a very thin ledge or a small, narrow ledge, so it may not collect that much. Again, some can. The main part will be um, the tree. I'm going to do quite a bit on the tree. But you've got it. You've sort of got a gist of what I'm, how I'm sort of just distributing, hopefully. Um, distributing the snow just randomly really um, so you can carry on and do that until you like the look of um, the amount of snow you've got settled yeah all right then what I would do next is you can put some snow here settle down on the star and then I would do some snow on the tree and I would do it on the 
the parts of the tree that these parts here are sticking out yeah they're overlapping the part below it and therefore I would in my mind would think there would be some snow that would have drifted down or settled and just sort of drift dripping off these bits of the tree yeah so you can do it on all of them you can do it on some of them you can make it a larger area or a very narrow bit but you know for example here the snow would be here and it's sloping down so some would drip off you see just on the edges of the bits that are sort of overlapping and make the drips as big as you want, as little as you want. I'm struggling with my Posca today. I usually, um, they work really well for me usually, but I'm struggling a bit. unless I'm just conscious of how long it's actually taking me <laughs> to do this okay so basically again you get the idea so all, uh, for me I'm going to do it on all of these little bits that are overhanging because I want that snow effect I want it to look like it has snowed a lot and the snow has settled um, and so of course some would be on the tree and it breaks up all that green that we have on this massive Christmas tree And that's what I'm basically going to do. So on all these ledges, I mean, not ledges, the overlap. So here as well. Yeah. And you can, if you want, if it's far enough from this little overlap, some of the baubles might have little dustings of snow on it. So, for example, this one, because it's a bit further from an overlap there, maybe not there. Um, this one here might have some dusting of snow. So for those, I'm just doing little dots just to give it that little effect. Yeah, so you could do that on your baubles as well, just to increase that effect of the snow settled. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think where else I might want to show you. I think that's it. So I'm going to work on this tree. Maybe I'll go off camera and do it because you've basically got a gist. All of these areas that are in highlight that are indicating the overlap of the Christmas tree, the little bits that are sort of hanging over. I'm just going to go over with the Posca and create my snow effect. Yeah. So let me finish off the rest of the tree. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, you could put a little bit of dusting of snow on this part, which is sort of almost horizontal, isn't it? So you can just put a bit of snow on that. So yeah, it's entirely up to you how much, how, yeah, how much you want to put, whether you want to put lots of snow, little snow, no snow that's absolutely fine as well um because it is an extra it is extra work trying to trying to put in all these details um and it does as you can see take a while to do these finishing touches but i like it because i like the end result um so let me finish it off and i'll get back to you once i'm done with the tree just putting a bit of dusting here okay let me go finish off the tree exactly like i'm doing there and then i'll be right back okay guys and that's how i finished the page um so lots of white paint pen just to create that snow effect um i know you're covering up quite a bit of 
uh, areas where you've laid down color, where you've done other paint pen work, where you've done glitter gel pen work, but it does bring the page to life according to me in terms of the snow effect. So I love how it looks and that's the page done. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is just sprinkle a little bit of Windsor & Newton white ink. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna show it to you on the camera. I should have got it ready, but I don't do it at my desk, so I'm not gonna do it on camera. But this is the Windsor & Newton white ink and I'm literally just gonna dip my paintbrush in there it's in white and I literally just dip my paintbrush in that and then I just dab it and sprinkle and I'm going to sprinkle quite a lot. Usually I do a little bit if it's not a snow page just to give a bit of highlight but for a snow page I'm going to do quite a bit because I want it to look like it's snowing right now um, in, in the present moment. So I will be doing that off camera um, but yeah guys this is our color along finally completed. I hope you guys, guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've watched all three parts. Um, it has taken me a good amount of time. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you like the, the end result. I do like how it looks now. You know, there's always that stage or that one point in time when you're coloring a page and you look at it and you're like, is this really working? But I think it all came together. And the moment for me that it all sort of came together was when I added the yellow at the back. I felt like even though I was trying to create that cold wintry effect, I still needed some warm colors in there just to bring this page to life. And I think those windows there do the trick. And then of course, all the white Posca pen I've used to um, create the, the dripping snow um, has also helped sort of just, yeah, get that little bit of pop to the page. And um, so, yeah, I think I'll end this here. I hope you've watched, uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching the videos and I'll be back with you guys again soon on my next video. I'm not sure what it's going to be on, but what I do know is for now, if I'm doing colour alongs, I'm going to go back to my old way of doing colour alongs because I'm get, able to get more pages done for you guys, recorded for you guys and out there. Um, this has taken such a long time and trying to reduce the amount of time between each part is quite hard as well. So I like to be able to do the colour along in one video. And then obviously you guys can slow it down and watch it in parts if you'd like. But for me, it's easier because then you're not waiting for part two, for part three. And I don't have that pressure that, oh, no, I still haven't got the next part out. You know, people, those of you who might be following will be waiting for the next part. And um, I find it's, you know, I feel a little bit guilty and I feel, yeah, it's a bit unfair for those of you who are faster at coloring than I am um to be waiting so long for each part um so i think for now my regular way of doing color alongs will probably be best and hope you guys don't mind that if you've even reached this far um hope you guys don't mind that um but yeah i hope you enjoyed this particular color along and i'll be back with you guys again soon on my next video i'm going to put a pop-up i mean a screenshot of what the page is going to look like at the end with the sprinkling so that you guys can see that at the end of the video all right guys take care thank you for watching if you've stuck around for the three parts and i'll be back with you guys again soon until then take care and